Hey, Pastor Matt here back for, I guess, our bi-monthly Ask TVC session. Uh, and so we got quite a few questions today, so I'm gonna just dive in. We are now through chapter two of the book of James, and we'll dive into chapter three, verses one through 11, on the taming of the tongue and what the tongue reveals about our hearts this coming weekend. But um, before we even mention any more of that, I wanna dive into some of the questions. Um, surprisingly, quite a few of the questions don't have anything to do with James, but rather Rather, um, some other things. So let me just walk through some of these questions here. The first is, do you think that as a Christian culture increases in a church, accessibility to the lost decreases? If so, what's the plan? Well, a, a couple of things. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to, but it often does. So what happens as um, a church uh, goes from, if we could think of the scale kind of like this, where everyone starts off like at a church plant, you kind of have just uh, a group of barbarians. They're ferocious, uh, evangelists, Evangelist. They're not only saying, come and hear and see, but let me come to you. Come to my house for dinner. Let me come to where you are. I want to be very intentional about my life. And then if you're not careful over a period of time, that can change. And you can come all the way over here to, to being kind of aristocrats where you protect privilege and, and all of a sudden it's no longer gospel and no longer edgy. And you demand that if you're going to be a part of this congregation, you look a specific way. And that's kind of becoming a type of civilized um, um, church that, that I don't know that's overly healthy or helpful. And so really the way we fight against this tendency is to be a people that understand that we are a family on mission together. So that the mission of the church is to make much of Jesus Christ, to grow disciples, and to share the gospel. And so we are a people that live intentional lives. So even to this day, I I look at the gym I work out in in a very specific way. I'm there not to get swole because that's not happening. I'm there because it's in that space that I'll be able to meet those who do not know Jesus Christ and begin to build relationships and share the gospel. I want to, as I, as I go to my son's football practice, know that there are men on his team or there are men who boys are on his team that don't know Jesus and I'm leveraging that time and I'm encouraging our congregation to constantly live intentional lives and and then you want to train people to share the gospel and you want to encourage people to share the gospel and you want to celebrate it when people share the gospel and this is a way that you weave into the culture of the church not not just we do evangelism but we this is who we are we are a people who rejoice in Christ publicly to others. And so I think that's how you fight it. That's the plan to celebrate and to train and to live intentional lives. And so that, that's how I would answer your question. What is the biggest impact believers can have on today's culture? The biggest impact believers can have on today's culture is what, what I would call, and it's not my phrase, it, it's, uh, I forget where it is, um, but, but it's faithful presence. So God has um, uniquely wired you and uniquely placed you. And, and so I, I would, in that unique wiring and in that unique placement, see your neighborhood and your workplaces as those um, places in your life where the gospel living must play itself out. And so you are distinctively Christian at work. You are distinctively Christian in your neighborhood. You are distinctively Christian in those circles in which you run. And so I'm guessing most people watching this are citizens of the United States of America. I would also say that you need to be a good citizen. So notice I'm not, I'm not kind of saying um, line up with a party or I'm saying you need to be good citizens of the United States. So faithful presence and good citizens citizenship are going to be our best bet to impact culture. So um, the third question is this. It, it's actually, if, if someone writing this is actually experiencing this, I want to take a little bit of time here. What do you do when you feel burnt out and you want to give up on ministry? Well, statistics show us right now that this is, this is way too common, um, that men and, and women in ministry are burning out in what appears to be record numbers. I don't know that they were tracking such thing 100 years ago, so to say record numbers is, is probably a stretch, but we're seeing that this is a legitimate issue. Um, I. I my third year as pastor of the Village Church, I, I went down and, and went down hard. I, I slept for 
nearly eight days and had to go get a bunch of tests to see what was wrong with me. I had just run too hard for too long on my own power, not paying attention to symptoms and, and not paying attention to signs, not really inviting anyone else into the fact that I was getting very weary and tired. And so here's some ways I would just wanna coach you. Um, I, I think first and foremost, um, you need to be real honest with people around you about the fact that you feel this way right now. Uh, I would maybe go sit down with elders or your pastoral staff, whatever authority that is, um, and ask for some help, maybe some time off to reconvene with the Lord. Once you get yourself back to a place of health, I would begin to weave into the pattern of your life, retreat and rest in the Lord. Now, the reason I want to purposefully say rest in the Lord is because there's a difference between a vacation and learning to rest in the sufficiency of Christ and in the Lord. So surely um, most people listening to this can relate to going on vacation and coming home just as tired, if not more tired from that vacation. So what we need is not just more time off necessarily, but rather time where we can reflect on who the Lord is, regain our confidence in this being his to carry and not ours to carry so that we might delight in serving him and walking alongside of what he is doing rather than feeling we have to manufacture and create him doing something. So uh, in my world, once a month we have, it's a Wednesday, we call it the day. And on that day we clear my schedule and I do nothing that day but pray and worship and fast and seek the Lord. I don't open a device, I don't do email, I don't have my phone, I have a paper journal, my Bible, and I will worship the Lord in song, I will make long lists of things I am grateful for, I will spend the bulk of my day in adoration. Those kind of, if you've ever heard me say, man, if we were to spend you know, uh, our whole time in here listing out good graces of God, we, we, we simply wouldn't have enough hours to accomplish that today. Or I'm gonna spend half the day writing out my adoration for the Lord, for all that he has done, for all that he is, for the attributes that I so marvel at, the things I've seen him do in my own heart. And then I spend the other half of the day just listing out where I'm deeply in need of his grace in my own life and in the ministry in which he's entrusted to me. And, and I find that coming off of that day, um, man, I feel rested in the Lord. I feel confident in who he is. And that's one of the biggest kind of um, checks for my spirit spiritual vitality in ministry? Will I enter into that day or will I cheat and use that day to catch up on email or something? And so that's a gauge for me. Um, the other thing, and, and I would, I'd really kind of encourage you in this direction, I'd start to pay attention not to time management, but rather energy management. So do where is your energy levels? I mean, are you on fumes or, or are you, because all of us are gonna be busy. Ministry in and of itself is filled with meetings that we have to go to, people that we get to care for, time in the word that we that we get to get in there and dig around and, and mine out and put together beautiful truths for God's people to hear. But I wanna encourage you, get healthy and then once you're healthy, begin to weave into your life those checks and those breaks where you can get alone with the Lord and really reconnect on a intellectual, spiritual, emotional level with uh, the king of glory. Um, the, the next one, um, having started in your late 20s, what is your key piece of advice for younger church leader? Um, the, my key advice to younger guys is almost always the same. And, and you would think that it would be, oh, okay, you know, get in your Bible and know it well, but I just feel like that's a given. So a developed prayer life, um, knowing the Word of God, um, being at least somewhat doctrinally established, uh, I think was wisdom there. And, and the thing I would tell you though is almost every man of God I come across who loves the Lord deeply, Deeply and is effective in ministry, and by effective, I mean being obedient to what God has called him to, um, has spent a portion of their life underneath someone else, serving them, making them look good. And, and so I would encourage you, before you strike out on your own, um, to really spend time. So for me, that was at Beltway Park Baptist Church in Abilene, Texas, where I was there just as a utility back, man. I was just gonna do whatever Pastor David McQueen needed done. I was gonna serve him and serve that church. And it was there that I learned so much about how to do a meeting, 
how to um, operate in church discipline in a way that is loving, fair, and biblical, um, how to hire staff, how to, those things that, that people just take for granted are intrinsic and, and they're really not. And so um, find that space where you can get in a strong residency or you can serve uh, another high capacity leader as a member of their staff with some peeking in on some higher level meetings and things like that. So that would be my advice to younger guys. Um, the last one uh, is, why is Baptist not in the title of TVC since it is a part of the Southern Baptist Convention? Um, for where we are, by the way, I'm proudly Southern Baptist. We went to Baltimore, uh, we give to um, the cooperative program, uh, we plant some churches through NAM and the Sending Initiative and partner with them to plant other churches um, and couldn't be more excited about David Platt's hiring uh, at um, the International Mission Board. And again, I'm, I'm saved in a Baptist church, trained in a Baptist Bible college, not ashamed of that in any way. Um, but for where we live, live in the Metroplex with, uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex with a lot of transplants that work for American Airlines coming to us from the Northeast, coming to us from various parts of um, the country where the word Baptist carries with it some connotations that aren't true of Baptist. And so really, uh, we made the change to the Village Church, uh, but we still, we never officially changed the name. We're the Village Church um, or we're Highland Village First Baptist Church doing business as the Village Church. It just removed a small obstacle um, for those who didn't know Jesus Christ to come and hear it. Now, I do think that that the word Baptist is on the rebound right now, and so it doesn't carry the kind of negative uh, connotations of the culture wars that it once did. And, and so I don't know that I would make the change again, but we felt at the time, uh, the, the leadership team that was in place when I got here felt like it was it was a good time to make that change. And so that that's the answer. I don't even know if it's a good one, but that's the answer. So, all right, this coming weekend, James chapter three, verses one through 11. Uh, we've moved now past this um, faith without works is dead section, and we're gonna get into now uh, what the tongue reveals about the heart and how we can really look at our souls via our mouths. And so that'll be uh, a good time, you know, depending on where you are this weekend. Well, conviction's always sweet. We'll have a great time this weekend. So I'll see you then. Until then, this is Pastor Matt. Be back with Ask. TBC here in two weeks. Until then, God bless you.